Alright. Um, we are going to be going over the basics um, on how to make a forum signature of... This is not really a good example because it's not finished. But here... Um, let's find a piece... <coughs> this is a vertical tag, um, but the properties and similarities are pretty similar. <laughs> um, so the first thing you want to do is getting your proportions straight. straight. If you want a, a horizontal traditional tag, <coughs> I usually go with like 425 on like 225 I'll try I'll actually do 450 so you have white box second thing you want to do is getting a render you can just google renders or find find them on divine art etc <coughs> um, now this is my most irritating part is finding a uh, finding the render let's do this one all right we're just gonna do a simple c4d spam sig um, usual renders come with this uh, the person who cut it out you can just double click and it opens it up <coughs> in a full editable um, format you just erase this so you can keep the quality of the image in place control control s and then you can exit out of that now we got a now <coughs> we want to <coughs> excuse me we want to find our uh, rule of thirds here, or how you want to keep your render in. I'm going to try here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn this off for now. Okay. Second thing you want to do is be able to have a composite background, something that reflects the color. <coughs> I usually just go off of like off their clothes or something, or their skin. Doesn't matter which. Um, I'll, I think a darker brown would be good. <coughs> All right, now we got that. Now we want to touch up uh, some of the focal points of the image itself. We're going to uh, have to rasterize that. <coughs> I'm going to sharpen up the Oh, this image isn't very good for doing that. Okay, now I want to fix on the lighting of the parts that have already been lit. <coughs> I'm just going to highlight them up a little more. <coughs> Excuse me, man. <coughs> Next, we're going to look for... <coughs> Jeez, man. i got this phlegm in my throat. I, I don't know. We're just going to do a C4D spam sig for this part. Um, <coughs> I don't really have a method for these, um, usually. Um, whoops. God damn it. Okay. 
you usually want to keep your C4D render <coughs> at some kind of fl f some flowing motion, you know. So we just duplicate that, which is Control J. Move it in places uh, you'd think be necessary. At this point, you d I'm not really having a specific uh, set theme here right now. I'm just having these C4Ds spam. <coughs> okay. Next part is getting these C4Ds to... Uh, I'm going to put them in C4Ds in the group. Got our C4Ds here. So now I'm going to... Um, let's lock that layer. I'm going to do... Uh, color... Hue and saturation, actually. When it, oops. I might actually have to uh, combine all these, which you just highlight. Control E. And you have them all combined. Or you can also just highlight them all in... Uh, Whoops. You can convert them into a smart object. I do control E because it's faster. But let's get going with the change of color on these. Ah, oh, damn. Hold on. I do a color ov overlay. <coughs> I'm going to do it uh, kind of like brownish. Keep it... Uh, that didn't come out so well. Okay. I did a color overlay, put the color on brown, blend mode on color, opacity about 78%, just to keep uh, some of the reflections more uh, visible. Okay, now we got most of the most of the stuff done already. Well, not really, <laughs> but now we're gonna work on a light f for now at least. You need a light source of some court, some sort. <coughs> you see how the light's coming off his face here and right around his arm area. So we're gonna have. So I'm gonna put a. Some white splotches behind them in this area. Um, yeah, I think that'll be good. I'm going to blur it out a little bit. that color actually works hold on let's do an orangish kind of background oops uh, yellow oh that one's perfect okay <coughs> next part is adding the rest of that lighting, whatever you want to call it, to your render. So just control copy. I mean control click um whoops. Control click that <coughs> your image render. Make a new layer. And then like follow the light. Follow the light of the um whoops too big. And follow the light here. I'm going to blur it. I don't know what 
looks better. I think the color might be better, but I don't know. We're going to have it kind of bright. So I'm going to have it on color dodge. Okay. <clears throat> now we got that out of the way. We're going to add some more C for D's. These are just going to be background placements. We're going to go something with some grungy-ish kind of, uh, what you call it. I'm gonna make it pretty decently big, so. I'm also gonna add a color overlay. I'm gonna make it black. I'm also gonna rasterize it. <coughs> I'm gonna bring down the curves to a darker level. Now I'm gonna make it back to a convert smart object. So I don't lose that quality. Uh, there we go. Now we're just going to move this around a bunch. duplicating layers and what have you. We want to keep those light source parts of the image um, just chill in there, you know. Because they just don't randomly appear, and they gotta come from somewhere. Oh, come on, fill it in. Okay. We'll group that for C four D B G. Now we're going to blur them out a little bit. I'm also gonna add <coughs> a black Lighting shadows. I'm going to do it on the render, so don't be scared. Blur it out a little bit. Okay. 
I'm gonna do another <coughs> render. Um, what was this called? A let zero eleven. Okay. <sighs> Color overlay brownish. Now I'm gonna put this on top of the render. Like so. And here I'm going to um, erase a part. <coughs> I'm going to make like his arm poking out of the, the C4D here. Just like that. <coughs> I'm gonna add a little blur <coughs> to uh, underneath it. Uh, it's a little strong. I'm just gonna add a little darkness down here. Uh, the lighting on his right arm is bugging me. Hold on. Okay. A scar on his arm? <coughs> Maybe. I don't know. Alright. Now we got most of that done. I'm gonna blur out this some of these parts that keep keep focus off the focal point. Our focal point is this. What we really want is this right here. <coughs> That's what our focal point needs to be. Okay. okay. Now we got the majority of that done. We're gonna add like a nebula on the in the background, and I have nebula renders already preset here. So I'm gonna put that behind everything because you can see the background here is pretty. Uh, I want to change the color to. I have a color that is. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, that's an alright color. <coughs> oh, that's a no no right there. Hold on little parts here just gonna cover them up okay I'm gonna keep these nebulas um, Pretty frequent, I guess. All right. Next, we're gonna add <coughs> the on top 
light source, which makes it more vibrant. And that's <clears throat> pretty strong. Um, nope. Erase a little bit of it here. feel about that. Uh, oh well. Right now I'm just messing around. Add another thing of a uh, blackness or shade. Actually, I'm gonna make this like a dark gray. I need a darker gray. Darker. Uh, I guess that'll do. make it like he's trapped in this vortex of whatever and add some black I put a soft light <coughs> photo filter on there opacity maybe around 30% that back part right there kills the, the focal here now we're gonna add some more nebulas just little effects and or whatever I'm gonna change it to a more environmental color to the scene Probably linear dodge. Oh, I think color dodge would work. Huh, hold on. Uh, yeah, I guess a color dodge will have to do. Just gonna erase those orange parts. Just keep the little flickers, little particles. <coughs> I'm just gonna drop these all over. All right. 
right, once you have something of this kind of similarity, um, you can either start working on your text. I mean, this is far from finished, but. I usually like to go to my gradient maps first thing, so. I usually go with the most environmented uh, colors for the picture. And I usually just keep them on a very small. You can turn up the vibrance if you want, which I'm going to do. Maybe a black and white piece. Oh, yes. <coughs> um, I just like adding random ones. I just like adding randoms. Uh, let's see what the color dodge looks like. Oh, it just brings out the, the lighting a lot. Okay. I'll keep that at like 14%. Okay. I mean, we can work on text. I'm not a f huge guy on text, but I mean, we can try. We'll do something simple on like, we're gonna open the grid again. And <coughs> how you want your, to put your text is in places uh, where it doesn't affect your rule of thirds, maybe Right here would be a decent spot. Right here underneath his elbow or somewhere around his gun or underneath right here. I'm gonna do it right here. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do it right here. The evil within, since that's what this renders from. Whoa, hold on, something's wrong with my There we go. Actually, I'm gonna just copy that part. Keep the. I'm gonna make this the the pretty big. Evil. as easy as it gets. Just add something to fill in that gap there. You can add photo filters to your test and make it pop out more. Which I am going to do. Whoops.
Hmm. <clears throat> oh, you can't even read it. So let's see how this plans out. Maybe a stroke, a white stroke. Whoops. Okay. I don't know. Well, the text isn't very important for this piece. I'll just keep it at that, I guess. off the grid here is something you can do or it can't do it doesn't matter what you do but <sighs> I like to go to apply image after you make a new layer on top of everything just go to filter sharpen smart sharpen and you can sharpen up however you want I'm not a big guy on like making it super sharp. Uh, well, this is a very easy, simple tutorial on how to make a basic signature. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to. Uh, Give me any feedback you'd want in future videos, anything you'd like me to do for you. But that's that.